So without further ado, I would like to introduce our cleanup hitter. Um, and that's a gentleman who has been uh, around uh, progressive uh, circles for many years. He's been an activist for uh, more years than many of, well, as many years as many of us have been alive, more years than some of us have been alive. Um, I, the re most remarkable thing to me that I know that this gentleman has done was uh, he introduced to the television audience uh, for the first time the Zabruder Br film regarding the Kennedy assassination on a Dick Cavett talk show, and we'll have to ask him when that was, many, many years ago. But anyway, the person I'm going to introduce is going to entertain us here for a few minutes. His name is Dick Gregory. Yeah. Yeah. Dick Gregory, come on out. I tricked y'all. Y'all looking for... <laughs> Y'all look at me, come from the back, I came from the front. <laughs> Let me first say we thank and praise God that we've all made it here safely today. I pray to God that your return and my return will be equally as safe. I can't hear you. Uh, that's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all yeah. used to Negroes talking loud, right? <laughs> Y'all told me to be like you, so I'm I... <laughs> oh, wait, Maybe we do it like this here. Did you want to do the auction first? Or no, 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 I just okay. want them up here. All right. I got something to auction out, but I don't like white folks giving me shit. I ain't seen. <laughs> I ain't seen. It might be a. You know, <laughs> oh, that word bothers y'all now, huh? Somewhere, I sit here the last day and a half wondering, do you really know who you are? Do you really know who you are? See, when you come out and you're not sanctioned by Harvard or Yale or the people in control, sometimes you even have doubts. What you have can save not just America, but this whole planet. Okay. Whole planet. I've been waiting for you. Hmm? And it might be too late. I would never say this publicly. Once you're nine months pregnant, you can't abort. But if it can be saved, it's because of you. Hmm? Not the Kennedy assassination. You. Unbeknown to them thugs, September the 11th happened with all the electronics. Hmm? You don't have to depend on NBC and CBS and the power structure. You have it in your hand. Mm -hmm. I listened to you this morning, sister, and thought about had it not been for the civil rights movement that liberated all of us, you wouldn't have had this space. Mm -hmm. Only women. Hmm? And when you think about what we have missed down through the years, I lived in an all-black neighborhood and nothing I hate any worse to hear African American talking about community. We do not live in a community. They don't know that. A community is where you control your press, you control your money, you control banking and finance, you control the car. We don't control that. We live in a hood. What is a hood? Something you put over your face when you're trying to hide something. They don't know that. Huh? And when you think about how this system has messed up our mind, how many PhDs you got? I look at my mother, what a lady. Worked two jobs all year, because she had six children, so we could have Christmas. Hmm? Christmas. You know how ignorant you got to be to work your butt off? Not 
for your children to go to college because that wasn't even in our mentality for Santa Claus. <laughs> and when that black woman worked her butt off, she tell me a white man bought this dish, and y'all don't even know who we are. Think about that. You man, a Jew being dumb enough to say Hitler and the Nazis brought you these toys? Huh? And that's the big problem. We know all of it. That's why I didn't have to do too much to move over into this. I live around nothing but black folk. I didn't see, I'm 81 years old. I didn't, we didn't have TV then. What did he invent it? Radio. You know how dumb you got to be to listen to a tap dancer on the radio? <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm not around white folks, and the only white folks I see in the movie, I didn't know it was no dumb white folks till I went to white college. <laughs> I didn't know it was no ugly white folks till I went to white college. <laughs> I got to college and called my mother and said, Mom, I wish you was here. I saw an ugly white dude today. <laughs> she said, son, have you started that drinking? <laughs> and the problem today in America, as fast as this thing is moving, we don't know each other. If you knew what I had, we worked for the white folks that did this. We knew it, so you knew it. Because yeah. huh? yeah. when they whoop you down to nothing, they don't see you. You invisible. Huh? So I just had to slide mine over and put them in a box. We always knew this. How many of y'all saw the last Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln movie? Hmm? We knew that Lincoln's daddy was black. Why you think they started off that movie talking about this nappy, kinky hair? Hmm? And the good thing about that, these are young producers that's doing that. They're not scared to do it. Huh? And you don't catch the cold that Lincoln was gay. What's the gay, the gay wing of the Republican Party? Log log cabin. Log cabin. Who's the only president you ever knew lived in a log cabin? Y'all don't, don't miss that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere. And so I just say thank you. I participated in the 50th anniversary of the I Got a Dream speech. I was really disappointed and hurt. Not once was our Indian brothers and sisters mentioned. And you white folks is double bad. You stole this fucking country from them. And when you talking about September 11th and all that bullshit, they don't even come into your mind. Huh? A lot of white folks I meet, you think America was a good country and got bad. This bitch ain't never been no good. <laughs> <laughs> you just asked in the wrong, ask the Indians. Huh? Ask a woman, a white woman that came over here with that punk. And he didn't give her the right to vote till 1921. That's his mama, his daughter his wife, his sister, and that don't bother y'all? That's right. Because you're filled up with that filth inside of you. Okay, when you work with shit, you smell like shit. <laughs> Hear me now, because that's what y'all dealing with. And it's hard to get people to come over on this side. Why? Why? It's hard because they've accepted it. Hmm? They've accepted it. And you have too. Oh, you good on this. But are you aware that shit happening over there in Syria right now? It's organ stealing. Y'all so fucking good at reach. Are you aware of that? Are you researching? It all goes together. Yeah. Huh? Absolutely. Yeah, you, know. Absolutely. you can't do what we're here for and think they're not poisoning your food. Yeah. Huh? And I'm messed up because I thought y'all was, I didn't think nobody was as bad as white folks. Oh, oh God. Y'all ain't nothing but wimp punk pimps. Huh? And then when it touches you, then you raise hell. What about all of y'all who's been out here before this? Huh? Before this. And you can't make black folks rise up talking about that shit you was talking about today. We've been knowing they do that. Y'all didn't know. 
<laughs> serious. When them thugs in Europe had all the money they made, see, one thing about a white Christian, oh, I love white Christians. When you get old, you're trying to get into heaven now. You give up all the shit. <laughs> Somewhere. If my mother was alive and hear some of the shit I'm talking about, she'd call police on me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you how important you are. Money is not power. Education is not power. Information is power. And if I give you bad information, you got bad power. And those of you all heard my sister here this morning, uh, when you talked about that time, everybody laughed. They laughed because we were embarrassed. Huh? The people we pay to protect us didn't tell us that. We don't have to pay tax to her. We don't have to pay tax to you. But you win in it. You win in it because you got a new set of young folks coming through that don't look at NBC or CBS or ABC News. And so when you stop and think about the internet, think about when Kennedy was shot. I never say he was gunned down and killed in Dallas because he didn't die in Dallas. Now, I'm not going to get into that. Hmm? Who in here know that? Okay, I, that's all. No, no, I'm, I'm saying this to say that. Y'all don't know nothing. Huh? You're working on this, and if this country fall, and it's going to fall, you can blame it on the press and the police. Not them cops you see in the street. The ones that know what happened to Kennedy and Dow, they told you, dude, y'all is old enough. Don't you know when Kennedy got there, his brain was missing? How many of y'all know that? Okay? And then you didn't ask the question, here's the president, most popular, just get shot. All the secret, everybody got to be around him. Who got his brain? Huh? Skull and bones? Well. Navy's all over it. There's a movie out on it. Y'all know about it? Other Side of Midnight? Hmm? Other Side of Midnight. Hmm? Y'all better watch them movies a little close. How many of y'all saw the last Batman movie? Anybody? Did you remember who? Yeah, you saw it, right? That, that Batman movie finished two years before it was released. And all that mess in Colorado, when it opened up, go back and see it again. Do you know they mentioned Sandy Hook in that movie? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Hmm? That's why your children are so hip. Hmm? They catch all them signals, and you don't. Hmm? Black community, we trying to tell them, pull your pants up. Well, I can't say that. Because I used to be a heavy drunker, and how many times drink, and how many times I drove drunk. I was breaking the law, wearing your pants below your butt, ain't breaking no law. Y'all crazy? <laughs> Men that rape women don't wear their pants down low. The Nazis didn't wear their pants down low. The Ku Klux Klan that was raping black folk didn't wear their pants down low. What y'all scared of? And when you stop and think about it, this whole thing of saving this nation is in your hands. Hmm? And they know it. Hmm? Because they could used to take this conference out with NBC and CBS, hmm? doing the editorial. You older folks followed it when I like to hear films ring because I mean your bills paid. <laughs> so you think this just happened? How many of y'all know about that mentally retarded center they had in Boston in 1929? <laughs> <laughs> And what did they do in 1929? This government, just to make sure you don't think this just happened, 
They took manganese as he's getting ready for the nuclear age. These are all white children. And put in their oatmeal in the morning and fed it to them. You think this just stuff? You think America was good and got bad? Yeah. And most of the black folks you ask, they'll lie to you. And thank God I don't know what my mama put in me, if she put it in me. I ain't never lied to white folks. That's how Martin Luther King. Oh, he he was not he was just as nice off TV as he was when he was on. I'll call you a honky in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll also be out here dying with you. Hmm? Because I know who you are. Hmm? And one day when y'all find out what the word honky means, you won't bother. <laughs> See, prostitution is for white men. Okay? Somebody said, no, black men, no, she my sister, I get that bitch for free. Huh? Tell me about what it is. And all the whorehouses was in the black community where them white men couldn't be seen by their friends. And they pulled up to the house and honked the car, honk, honk. And the black man come out and take him in and park his car. That's honky. Somewhere. Harvard. Ivy League school, I know some white folks in Europe and some black folks here wouldn't send a dog there. Every Ivy League school was created by slave owners for their dumb white boys. Hmm? Yale, right now, they got 12 schools. School of this, school of that. Eight of them is named after slave owners. Hmm? And so where are you going now? And I know what they do to you. They beat you up, they take your money away from you, they lie on you. Why not? You're an army going after the enemy. And the enemy is supposed to act to us the way they're doing. Ain't nothing personal. And when you know you're not doing nothing, that's when they don't bother you. Somewhere. And let me tell you something, when that you know God for that universal God pick you, leave no footprints. You don't have to be validated by the New York Times and the Washington Post and NBC. Hmm? You validated by your peer groups. Hmm? You validated by people who've gone through the same thing you have. Hmm? We're just up here talking about a, a new type of prostitution that's coming out. NBC cameras be lined up in the street. They're coming from all over the world to cover this. <laughs> but you have in your hand to save America in the world, they ain't about to come up here. And you few agents that's in there, you don't even count. <laughs> See, we know how to mess you up. All we got to do is hold a conference like this for three days and don't say nothing. <laughs> and then tapes go back empty. They think you switched over on our side. <laughs> I thank you, architects and engineers. Uh, that impressed my grandmother. <laughs> and then willing to invest money to do the same thing they do. Go to Broadway and advertise a show. Hmm? Or a new type of alcohol. You know how important this is? What you doing? Hmm? And the universe protects you. Let, 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 let me first say, before I go any further, let, let me apologize to you white folks. <laughs> I mean it. <laughs> Up until Obama, president, become president, I really believe that all you white folks thought all black folks look alike. I, I, I meant that. Right? <laughs> then after Obama got in, I got to apologize. I haven't had no white folks run up to me and say, excuse me, Mr. President. 
And we like Obama for different reasons. We know him. We know who he is. We worked for. We knew who he was. So you did. Hmm? But he gonna do something to white folks in America that we couldn't do. He gonna run y'all crazy. <laughs> and we were glad he made that second term. All that old bullshit he's talking. Second term, a second term gonna run white folks mad. <laughs> There's no cure for madness. <laughs> What did they do to mad dogs? They kill them. Hmm? Here's the important thing to us. And it's funny, the much knowledge you all have about the system. I had some of you tell me, what a bad president he is. All of them bad. Hmm? All of them bad. How many of y'all know Roosevelt was a coke addict? And on December the 7th, when he declared war, he was so coked out. His wife had to sign the problem. How many of y'all know that? Hmm? Okay. That's a game. Hmm? You haven't had a president in the White House that wasn't controlled by the big boys. Huh? So don't blame this on this brother. Huh? <laughs> He's just following white folks here. Look. You can hate the nigga if you want to, but at least his mama's white and loved the white part of him. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all know I ran for president, and I know a lot of y'all. And you just wasted your vote on me, because had I won, I'd have asked for a recount. <laughs> <laughs> See, I know this shit was going on then. <laughs> How many of y'all saw me on the Jack Port or the Jack Port show that night when I talked about the government tapping my phone? Oh, he went, he did everything, put Mr. Gregory, I cannot believe you come on this show and accuse the United States government of tapping your phone. You have any evidence? <laughs> Anytime a black person in America can owe Bell Telephone $70,000 and they don't cut the phone off, it's tapped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they call me once a year, Bell tell me, Mr. Gregory, y'all care to pay anything on the bill this year? <laughs> so how do you deal knowing the government's tapping your phone? You tie them up. When I get through here, I'm going to the room and call my wife and read the alphabets off to her backwards. <laughs> and they'll be up three months trying to crack that code. <laughs> Dumb you have to be to be a spy. <laughs> you got to go to college, huh? Some go to grad school to be a... With aspirations of being a spy, it's like, like, it's like wanting to be Mickey Mouse when you grow up. <laughs> and, and stay happy. Don't, don't let this wipe you out. Don't let it turn you to drinking. No, I'm serious. When you get out here isolated, see, when you look at the facts, like you look at the time, and the most people who could change this act like you're crazy. Hmm? Hmm? You older folks, when Congressman Boggs went to the floor of the Congress <clears throat> and talked about what happened to Kennedy, and he didn't believe none of it. Can y'all remember that speech? Yes. The next day, the New York Times came out, said he's out of his mind. He need to be out of Congress. And his plane disappeared. How many of y'all know that? I know. Which one? Hale Boggs. Hale Boggs. Did you also know it was William Clinton that drove him to the airport that day? It didn't just start. In the process of this punk research y'all doing, did you happen to come across the word Mena, Arkansas? Yes. 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 All the drugs come in there and Clinton runs it all. That's right. Huh? Somewhere. So when you look around on these old punk heroes they give you, 
Then look in the mirror one day and look at your face. You the real ones. That's right. You the real ones. Y'all got family members that think you crazy? Yes. yes. <laughs> now some of you are. <laughs> One thing you have to do, you have to be careful with them old folks. See, what you have on is the universal magic glasses. <laughs> so there's responsibility to go with it. Once you put the magic glasses on, you can never take them off. And you can't force what you see on people that don't have the magic glasses. <laughs> In America, you've been taught to see how it's supposed to be. You know how it is. And that would hurt a lot of people, your family members, who haven't reached that level yet. Huh? They're working for retirement. They're working for this house. The French said it. The French named it markets. Y'all know that? Because they say it's a death note. Hmm? Mortgage. Oh, mortgage. Mortgage. Yeah. Oh, I, did, I didn't get to the school with you, so you have to listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I just cannot tell you how thankful I am for being here. Brother Lou, where's Lou? Yeah, Lou. Hey, thank you, brother. Thank you. Wolf. Brother Wolf. Somewhere. I think we might win it. I don't believe it. But because of you. Because of you. And because of September 11. 9-11 is a trick. America don't use a number for the month. Halloween's October 31st. Huh? Christmas is December. If you walked in the house tonight, tomorrow, when you get home, and your mother or your wife or your son is on the phone or daughter, and you say, who you talking to? You say, 9-11. Look, look, no, look at the thing that comes over your face. The word 9-11 tells your brain to be scared. Hmm? That's what it tells you. Huh? And remember, you taking on for free a multi-trillion dollar company. I'm not talking about a man, I'm talking just a section that got to make sure your stuff don't get out. Uh, that's what you know. But then know who you are. Because hmm? it's a click upstairs. John McCain. Hmm? How many of you all know a military court sentenced him to be shot to death by a fine squad? How many of y'all do that? Huh? So y'all think y'all so fucking hip, right? <laughs> huh? John McCain, who's on all the shows, the Democrats don't talk, the Republicans don't talk about it. And Richard Nixon pardoned him. Because when he was a prisoner of war, he told on everybody. Huh? They got tape recordings they use in Vietnam of his voice saying who I am, and I'm a war criminal. That's him saying it. I fly Navy flighters, and how many times have I flew them over schools and bomb women and children? That's what he said. And y'all sitting and listen to this thug? Because the real boys haven't told you who he was? Hmm? John McCain. His. The North Koreans, North Vietnamese, couldn't understand why them planes got up on us so fast, so they had all the air, any aircraft guns sit up here. And they didn't know the McCain told them when they take off, they go 200 miles out the way this way. They <laughs> didn't come back around. And that night, they changed the anti aircraft guns over here. And that night, till the day that war was over, American pilots' death rate increased 64% because of that thug. Huh? Huh? If I know it, NBC know it. Huh? So I say this to you, you don't have to worry about getting this out. 
the normal way. Now can I tell you today, whew, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Y'all have to be stop being angry with one another. Do your own shit. Because every little bit y'all put out. See the beautiful part about this day and age? 50% of everybody was alive when Kennedy was assassinated. It's not on the planet today. That means 50% of everybody in this country wasn't here when King was here. 70% of everybody on planet Earth wasn't here when King was here. That's why you got to keep renewing your stuff. I'm not talking about new stuff, just not up there, put it out there. Because if you don't, then they have to listen to what the government says. Hmm? And every time you see this type of stuff on TV talking about the special, you the special. <laughs> And they never had to go through this before. Hmm? Never. Oh, if they knew what television was going to do. Like, if they knew what black if they knew black person would be a president, they'd have kept us in Africa and picked their own damn cotton. Don't <laughs> 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 tell me about family values. I am family values. I never stole nobody from another country and brought them here against their motherland, their tongue, their religion. And then white folks want to sit and tell me about family values? Shit, go ask the mafia. You want to know about They got the mama me and go to church every day and, 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 and ask for communion. Oh, Father, would you forgive me? I killed 27 people last night. And if you can do it quickly, I got 10 more to kill by noon. <laughs> and the, the good part about what you're doing, once you get your eyes open, you, there's people out there that won't let you close them. Hmm? There's people out there that work for the CIA and the FBI. They hate to have to do this, but they got to send their children to college. That's where me and them separate. I got 10 children, and I picked this over sending my children to college. Sending my, <laughs> sending my children to college is not going to change nothing. Uh, you will. So when you go to bed at night, think about your responsibility that you have, that you have, with no budget. Mm -hmm. No budget. And when you hear people talk about World War III will destroy this planet, then you really don't understand the real God. You understand the church. Mm -hmm. The real God, don't you hear that God talking to you? There's nobody with no weapon can destroy the planet I made. Woman get nine months pregnant and that Pentagon over there don't have a weapon that can open up your legs and keep that baby in you. That baby gonna fall if it means death to the mother and the child. Hmm? And if you knew who you were, then you know that stuff they're doing ain't but punk stuff. You got on this planet the same way I got on the planet. A male penis went into a woman's vagina. And when it ejaculate, 500 million sperms came out. <laughs> huh? Do you hear me? 500, not no one sperm came out and slowly <laughs> strolled up the fallopian tube. If we leave here this evening and it's five, there's five, half a billion restaurants around, and we are gonna take you to the best one, you in for a hell of a eat. Well, you are the best of a half a billion sperms, every one of you. Huh? So they ain't just messing with some punks and some sissies. They messing with a powerful force. 200, 100,000 miles of blood vessels in your body and that don't get in your way. Your blood make a complete cycle every 30 seconds. As you sit there now, your blood is traveling 200,000 miles a minute, and they got you believing a jet plane is fast. 
That's who you are. Just drop all that other crap. <laughs> the meanness, the bitterness at home for this system. Some of y'all do the same thing to your family that black men used to do to us. They go home, a white racist system, reduce them to a little boy, and then they won't come home and jump on us. God damn boy, you my son, nigga, I'll kill you. This is my house. They ain't mad at me. They have them white boys downtown that reduce them below that God value they had. And you all cannot make that mistake because too much depend on you. Too much depend on you. And with all the information you got, you don't need NBC here. All you need is one good writer and a computer, and you can send this around the world today. See, now you got to cheat a little. <laughs> you got to say at the conference, we turn 5,000 people away. <laughs> They had so many people showed up, they had to bring out the ride going. <laughs> That's what you do. Now, you know how many of y'all who put your life on the line would be happy if tomorrow morning the New York Times ran a two-page spread on this? You forget they're nothing but dog pump devils. But as long as power was willing to say something good about me. Hmm? Malcolm X, they beat up 10 Muslims in Brooklyn one day and carried them to that bad district in Brooklyn. But they got shot. 20,000 black folk showed up. Mm -hmm. They wasn't ready for that. The mayor gets on the phone, called the governor. The governor called the president and said, you got to send the military in here. We don't think we can save New York City. But if you get the military here, we might be able to save New York. Mm -hmm. and then Malcolm X pulled up and jumped out of the car and ran up on the stage and said, Brothers and sisters, we'll take care of it. Go home. And they went home. Front page editorial the next morning, New York Times. They said what Malcolm did, and they ended by, no Negro should have that much power. <laughs> okay. Huh? I just said, Malcolm, you better come up front here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're not the banker. <laughs> your microphone was actually turned on. Here, Which one? The one in your hand. This one's not turned on? It's not turned on. Okay. There you go. Okay. Yeah. And you waited that long? Yes. <laughs> and then, and then wonder why we suspect you of being an agent? I'm sorry, you hear now? <laughs> Can you imagine that? And how many white folks in America could believe that story? Hmm? Here's a man that come out. No cops was killed. No scrolls burnt down. Huh? In the New York Times. And we knew then he was going to die. We have the autopsy of Malcolm X, easy to get. You intimidate the government, say, we're going to court because that was not a federal crime. What y'all doing with the autopsy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we got it. Those of y'all remember that incident, Malcolm was up on the stage. Mm -hmm. Three black men, somebody dropped a smoke bomb, mm -hmm. and they rushed the stage and shot him. When we forced the CIA to give us those autopsies, we found out all the bullets in Malcolm was going down. Hmm? They had blanks. Because as vicious and as insane as they are, they still wouldn't believe that another black man would kill a brother like Malcolm. They didn't trust him. And since then, they have admitted that they rented the Ottoman ballroom two weeks before. They the ones went in there and cut the panel and did the shooting. Hmm? 
So y'all think this stuff just happened with? I was in New York. It was a white guy that he was running against my mother. I would have campaigned for him. Why? He was head of the ACLU. And in 10 years, he had cost that city $5 billion selling police brutality cases out of court. And 90% of those was black folks. So those of you in New York, you know you have a mayor, and then you have a, a public advocate. He was running for the public advocate. If you win, you got $300 million to advocate for the people in New York. So I went in. Jackie Robinson's wife called me and told me what a beautiful brother he was. And I said, I'll come in. I'll pay my own way. I'll get my own hotel. And I'll be there two days. One day, we'll do some photo ops. And the second day, give me some trucks and some people to go around to the housing projects in the, the, the black neighborhood and let me tell the black folks who this white dude is. Monday night, I called my wife. Hey, babe, where you got me sleeping tonight? You not. Your friend called from Paris and said, don't spend the night in New York tonight. So I got on a train and went to Washington, D.C., got there at 4 o'clock in the morning. And I called some folks that we march every day. Joe Madison, Dr. Ife Williams. Every morning we go out and walk at 4. I wasn't planning on being back. So we went out, walked. We had a demonstration at the Sudan Embassy. And then we go into the Congress. I came back in the house, and my wife and my son had called, said a plane hit the World Trade Building. I thought it was one of them Piper of Cubs, you know, like King Kong shit. <laughs> Y'all see King Kong? Yes. Did you ask any question, what a gorilla doing in New York? <laughs> Ain't no trees and Lord no ain't no bananas. <laughs> That's one of their coded messages. Go back and see it again. That's about the, the black heavyweight champ of the world, Jack Johnson, that couldn't separate himself from white women. And that's why the gorilla was there with the white lady. And the reason they came there, because Madison Square Garden is the boxing capital of the world. Hmm? That's what it's about. And if you saw The Wizard of Oz, go back and see it again. It's about the Kansas City Federal Reserve. Hmm? And it's all there. The little children see it now. Huh? Hmm? And I really felt sorry for you. Well, I still feel sorry for you white women. Thank you. No, it's not that kind of things. <laughs> I looked at Wolfman, Dracula. Frankenstein, and I just need you white ladies to explain to me how Frankenstein that move a foot a month can catch you. <laughs> I'm going to start me moving and say, white women, stop screaming and run your ass off. <laughs> Somewhere. And be happy. Be happy knowing what you're doing. Hmm? You got American soldiers running up a hill somewhere tonight, willing to die for America. Hmm? And when they get through, they haven't saved nothing. You, you will turn it around. The truth is going to come out. I'm so damn sick and tired of living in this country and stuff they did 100 years ago just coming out. <laughs> Where were you, New York Times? Hmm. And it's what you're doing that's changing things. The newspapers is just about out of business. Hmm? 
That's because you put news out here through the internet and, and that the young folks is looking at. Like I said, I'm 81 years old when I was a little boy. The network news, NBC, CBS, ABC, network news had 70 to 80 million people looking at them, not together, every night. They can get six million people to look at them today. Hmm? Because there's something out here that people have found off those networks that they listen to now. Hmm? And that's what it's about. And you know we won when we got press people, uh, the press people today, just as good as you. But they got to ask dumb questions. <laughs> Hmm? Like NBC do. <laughs> well, how do you know the clock stopped? <laughs> Girlfriend, who else called you Saturday Night Live? You get most stuff out there. <laughs> Take care of your body, too. <laughs> the number one cause of death in America is not cancer, sugar, diabetes, or high blood pressure, a heart attack, it's sleep deprivation. Hmm? Sleep deprivation. Number two, dehydration. Hmm? More people die in America every year from dehydration than die from floods, fires, storms, earthquakes, Tornadoes, simple drinking water, huh? Hmm? And they didn't dirty up the water so bad. Hmm? But somewhere, the misinformation where, if you go to Europe today and selling Vaseline petroleum jelly, they put you in jail, fat and what are you selling crack? Why? That's gasoline. And you rub that shit on your children, huh? And they tell you, Vaseline, petroleum, jelly. <laughs> and they usually get by with it. But she saw that goddamn clock, it stopped. We normally don't see it. Oh, what a wonderful watch. Oh. It's not the right time. <laughs> Somewhere. I just cannot thank you. <laughs> and stop worrying. You ever got debt? So what? That's the biggest problem I had with my wife. We got married. She couldn't handle debt. <laughs> when we gonna pay Sears and Roebuck? Baby, we ain't got no money. And when I get some money, Sears and Roebuck is not my first priority. <laughs> Uh, that man, nice little Christian lady, you know, the American way, you know. I said, them white folks still knew I wasn't going to pay for this shit when I got it. What do you mean by that? On the back of the application, say, who's going to pay for this? I said, your mama. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks later, I go to the house, she said, they did it, they did it. Sis and Roebuck, here's the letter. I opened the letter. Final. <laughs> Final call. I said, what you saying about final call? That means we won't be hearing from them no more. <laughs> <laughs> you got to always let things end in your favor. Hmm? My brother called me. He's one of the big Negroes y'all read about with Enron that almost went to jail. He ain't got no money now. Oh, he wanted to be white so bad. <laughs> he, went out to, he went out to Hollywood where them rich folks live. Got out there, little poor, poor black like me out of St. Louis. Got some money and wanted to change colors. He hired him a Japanese gardener, two Mexican nannies. Do y'all remember when the Mexican nannies went on strike two years ago in California? Him and his wife had to stay. He got two PhDs, his wife got three PhDs. They had to stay home that day because there wasn't no Mexicans to take their children. And that's the first time they found out the children couldn't even speak English. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And those of you who them bill collectors, don't get scared of them. Shit, they in India. <laughs> <laughs> Just ask the phone. Yep, uh, is uh, Richard in? They can't say two names at once. I said, yeah, this is Richard. Uh, well, oh, yes, come on down and get it. I'm here, I'm here. I'll be here for the next day. Come on, get it. Come on, get the damn money. I'll give it to you cash. <laughs> and that's what I've been trying to tell black folks. I don't know if white folks do it, because I don't know y'all that well, but a lot of black folks tell their children to say, I'm not home. <laughs> when you tell your children to lie for you, they'll lie to you one day. When they call me, I just pick up the phone. Hey, Dick Gregory. Now, they don't know what to do. Because they train that you're going to tell them, I'm not here. So now they got to run back to the manual. <laughs> what do you do when they say they're home? <laughs> so he said, this is not you. I said, boy, how old are you? He said, I'm 22. I said, I've been on this company, this money, for 38 years, <laughs> before you was born. What make you think you gonna collect it in your lifetime? <laughs> See, if you play this account right, you'll be able to retire on this one. <laughs> Somewhere. Somewhere, <laughs> just leave here knowing who you are. You know who them thugs are across the street. They think they know who you are. Hmm? Napoleon found that out the hard way when he went into Haiti. Hmm? With the mightiest army in the history of the planet. Hmm? And them Haitians had bamboo sticks and took spoons and sharpened them down and kicked his ass out of there. And the French didn't make the mistake that most folks make. Napoleon wanted to stay there and check and find out what happened. They say, you're nothing but a damn soldier, boy. We sending the scientists in. Hmm? The scientists in. And then French scientists came back and said, it's voodoo. <laughs> because You've been led to believe voodoo is spooky. Voodoo is a French word. It means spiritual atom. Hmm? You can't see neither one of them. Hmm? And that's what you're about to become. Hmm? That's what you're about to become. And then they see things and they don't understand it. All they know how to do is shoot and terrorize folks. When you get to the point you can't, that's why I'm alive. 10 black children, man, 54 years. Hey, how come you have not killed? How the hell I know? Ask them. <laughs> and that's all, I got to explain to you why I'm not dead. <laughs> if I thought them thugs could kill me, could get past the universal God that I pray to, I'd cuss God out and help them thugs pull the trigger. Hmm? You didn't get here after the, if y'all knew the real record of how many people been killed hmm? that we don't know about. Hmm? How many people been framed on the job for stealing that we don't know about? They just asked a simple question that they heard one of y'all say, but they didn't know you ain't supposed to ask that to the boss. Hmm? And so a lot of people depend on Newton, not just you. And so I tried to read this book last night, and I thank you. Where's, where's my brother? Here. Well, thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And poor Wayne back there, they kicked his ass everywhere they could kick a white boy's ass. <laughs> Stand up, Wayne. Stand up. Ain't nobody kicked you today. Stand up. Where is he? He's right here. Thank you, brother. He means Wayne, Wayne Madison. Madison. Stand up, Madison, stand up. Man, man, thank you. Thank you. 
You know you got over when black folk be calling me, tell me what you said. <laughs> Thank you, brother. That's right. Thank you. And we need to meditate mm -hmm. and pray for one another. And the last thing you do before you leave this conference, just get a, a picture in your mind of who was here in a picture in your mind who wasn't here and why they wasn't here. Some of them been beat down to nothing, no money, no nothing. Everybody would like to send their children to college and, and the better things you want for your children. That don't mean nothing where this country's going. Hmm? Don't mean a damn thing, so somewhere. And then after you get through with this, don't stop, take a few minutes and start working on the rest of the stuff. <laughs> you older folks in here remember Gene Dixon? Yep. The number one psychic in the world. You ever read a column? <laughs> oh, my mother was alive. She think that went sit at the right hand of God. <laughs> <laughs> and then we find out that she was working for Hoover. He would give her, her t his targets 18 months ahead, and she would run it. Hmm? 18 months before Kennedy went to Dallas, she said, Kennedy should not go to Dallas. He, wasn't even, he hadn't, hadn't even been scheduled. I see dark clouds around his head in Dallas. Then after they pop him, they run that column again. They, Ooh, she knew, huh? That's what this is about. This is what this is about. But you, not about killing, not about shady stuff. When y'all called me, man, and told me about the money, money y'all gonna put into these ads. Whew. On Broadway, you got Broadway in London? Huh? Yeah, they have one on Broadway. You sound like you didn't know. <laughs> well, Richard Gage Times is the one who did it. Times Square, Times yeah, Square. yeah. There's Richard. That, thank you, time. that's, yeah, that's. Yeah. 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 I, I, I guess I'm guilty of all white folks looking alike to me. I, <laughs> and so again, as you leave, just enjoy this. Because you taking on the mightiest government that ever existed in the history of the planet. And I see in you what I see in the civil rights workers. 50 years later, you don't see no hate or no meanness or bitterness hmm? in them. Because they know who they are, the job they have to do, and if they die, it's worth it. Hmm? It's that simple. Look at the Trayvon Martin piece. Y'all better recheck that out. I'm one of the free, few people that don't say publicly, I don't think Jemison did it. Hmm? I know how tricky this government is. Hmm? Y'all know the story? Yeah. Hmm? Tell us what you think. What do you think? You say what I know? What do you all the major papers reported about the Skittles and the iced tea. You got to hang out with young folk to know you take Skittles and drop them in iced tea, you get a hit more powerful than crack. Hmm? Hmm? You got any grandchildren? Uh, not yet. You got any children? Yeah. I said, if you hadn't, I'd say, it's just too late, just give up, just go. <laughs> How many of y'all knew that? And my seven-year, look, look at the hands. My seven-year-old grandson said, oh, Dad, <clears throat> if you put Mountain Dew in it, it'll make crack look like Kool-Aid, okay? That's what's out here. Didn't it bother you to have a homicide that the whole world's fascinated and they told you more that was bought at the store than about the homicide? You didn't feel nothing? 
So y'all, some of y'all know the story. He's looking at the All-Star, the basketball All-Star game. Was that Sunday? Huh? At halftime, he ran to the store. We do it all the time. Run down, fix your ham and cheese sandwich, you know, get you a beer, you know, call somebody. So you back. So that's what's in everybody's mind. Except he was killed at 717. The ball game didn't start till 8 o'clock. He laid in the mark for three days as a John Doe. How many of y'all know that? Huh? They came by Monday, the next day, morning, huh? With three cops and a chaplain to show the pictures to his father. His father identified him, and they still kept him as a John Doe. Hmm? I don't want you to hear this. What's that say? Here, listen to this now. This is the Sentinel, the... Headline, uh, Trayvon Martin's parents settle wrongful death claim. For over $2 million and nobody reported it. Hmm. Huh? Okay. This paper here, the, what, the, 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 the Sentinel. Orlando Sentinel, yeah. Only one paper reported it. Hmm. So, yeah. So, homeowners Association is thought to have paid more than $1 million. Thought the to. The reason okay. they thought because it's in federal court under lock and key. No. Hmm. He's killed February. February 26th. 26th. Yeah. The insurance policy was taken out March the 30th. Hmm. Hmm. When can you buy an insurance policy after it happened in they pay? Hmm? Hmm. You see that's, it like that? that yeah. Okay. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> huh? Who had the insurance policy? Who had it? Yeah, the Who's the beneficiary? The parents got it. Okay. Oh my God. Hmm. Yeah. Y'all yeah. yes. yeah. should go to black churches. They talk <laughs> shit like this every Sunday. Huh. <laughs> yeah, the, po the, po the po policy went into effect March 30th, a few weeks after Trayvon was shot. Okay. <laughs> That's odd. Now, if I've got to explain that to you, <laughs> then y'all need to go to the mental hospital. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? So what I'm saying is, thank you, brother. What I'm thank saying you. is, it's not just this over here. If you're food, hmm? the number one cancer group in America, hmm? vegetarians. Hmm? Hmm? Vegetarians. Why? Because you're not supposed to eat soy. The great black doctor invented soy for the military. They came to him and said, can you give us something we can get paint, ink, glue, <laughs> and plastic? Just go home tonight and punch it up, the harm effects of soil. We've always had homosexuals. What's this influx now? It not only gives you cancer, change male hormones into female hormones, and female hormones into male hormones. Hmm? They don't care nothing about you. Hmm? At first, I thought it was us. I was trying to give me some good white friends, and I'm trying to get as far away from y'all as I can. <laughs> Somewhere. And they put all this stuff down. The Jews is our puppet. But it ain't hard to make believe they mastermind this shit when you didn't lock them down in your soul anyway. Huh? They could blame anything on us and everybody ready to believe it. Black on black crime. Huh? What is black on black crime? Black, I'm just tired of black folk killing black folk. Who you think killing Chinese and Chinese today, China today? If we go to Italy tomorrow, who you think killing Italians in Italy? And if 98% of all the white folks that was murdered last year was murdered by white folks, if y'all ain't talking about white on white crime, how they trick us to talk about black on black crime? You kill where you live. Hmm? And so somewhere when you stop and think about all of the tricks and all of the stuff, and they put all this together, and that's how they run past you. 60% of all high, of college football games is fixed every Saturday. Any of y'all know that? 
So if they fix those games, what do you think they do in pro games, huh? This is a game. Now y'all gonna go somewhere and say, well, they couldn't do, okay, you knew everything, huh? <laughs> That's what's wrong with the black movement. Emotional, just cause I love black folks. I don't qualify to take my son if he had a brain tumor and operate on him. There's a lot of things you all don't qualify to do because you don't have the knowledge or the money. But if you perfect what you have got to do, just put it out there. Just put it out there. The right people. huh? Y'all came. Hmm? You ain't always been there. Believe like everybody else. America the beautiful. And then all of a sudden something happened. And now the government's get architects, engineers. Huh? <laughs> Those are the same folks that make our tanks, huh? <laughs> so they know, you know, when you measure. Hmm? My grandma don't know about no neutron and proton. She know truth. And y'all got to make her feel it in the black community. Because, hmm? see, they work next to the real white folks. They're next to the general. Uh, uh, you know, back with, uh, uh, I heard some folks on TV say, y'all did that. They, be, they, they didn't use no tack. Say, y'all did that. Oh, Millie, they lying on that. But she could tell the way he said it, mm -hmm. that he lying. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Hmm? My mother's mother's mother worked for Frank and Jesse James, James up in the boot hills. Hmm? So she know. When Jesse got killed, killed, Frank took the money and changed his name to Rockefeller. Hmm? Hmm? How many, any of y'all in here know that? <laughs> Old man Rockefeller, you see how vicious he was? I beat his wife and did all kind of crazy shit. That's cause he's one of them thugs. Hmm? That's what it is. You white folk walk right past the knowledge. You ain't gonna read that shit in no goddamn book. And now because what's happening out here in the street that they can't control, they got to try to win some of them patients back. So I turned on the History Channel one day. They got an hour and a half about Eleanor Roosevelt was a lesbian. Did y'all see that? Hmm? What do y'all be looking at? <laughs> <laughs> but this is what started from this. Hmm? And now there's an audience out there. Hmm? Before our movement, you couldn't find a black book in a white bookstore. Now they got whole sections. Hmm? Hmm? And that's what you have to do is raise that appetite up. You go on one of them shows and them thugs sitting there they, to debate you, that's all they're bringing them in. No, don't get angry with them. Hmm? Don't get angry with them. Somebody asked me, uh, Mr. Gregory, how come you don't believe in global warming? So I get in my ghetto bag. Uh, well, you see, <laughs> Oz don't know nothing about it, but I know glaciers been here for billions of years, and now they melting. <laughs> I was over in Spain. My people gave me $40,000 to come over. So I go over, and they're trying to tap me out. A lot of black folks would like that. If you ask them a question, they tuck their lips, and, well, no. <laughs> and white folks ask me, Mr. Gregory, what's the number one thing going on in your head? <laughs> I said, well, I, I just be trying to find out what happened to albinos after high school. <laughs> Every high school got albinos, then they just disappear. Where do they go? <laughs> I'm on airplanes every day, never seen an albino on a plane. <laughs> never turned on the news and hear this woman say, albino, rape me, that'd be easy to catch. Huh? <laughs> well, I just say thank you. And where this is going. And y'all didn't just come here because you didn't have nothing to do. You all had something to do. But thanks to the leadership, hmm? you're here. Mm -hmm.
And those of y'all that can put it in your budget, go to New York to Times Square and have somebody take a picture of you underneath this ad. Huh? You can move to Broad Street, Broadway. Huh? And so somewhere you have made a difference. And I cannot tell you this morning. Wasn't she lovely this morning? Right here? Wasn't she lovely? Yeah. And so again, we say thank. There's a couple of things I, I, I'm not going to ask y'all, but I need to ask you, white folks, about them goddamn dogs y'all got. <laughs> <laughs> is that petroleum jelly? Mm -mm. No, this is, this comes out the helpful store. That don't mean it's safe. <laughs> Probably made out of dynamite or something. <laughs> I went to speak for organic gardeners in Maine. And we were talking about these new tomatoes they're making. Genetically engineered with a fish cell. So the tomato can hold water. Any of y'all know about that? Yeah. You can leave it on your kitchen table and come back seven weeks later and just as pretty and red. But when you eat it, your body holds water. Hmm? Hmm? And the fact that doctors is not aware, they think you're waterlogging and they give you the pills to pull the water out the body and wasn't nothing wrong with you in the first place. Hmm? That's how fast this thing is moving. Mm -hmm. hmm? And when you white folks hear them Cialis, yeah. that's for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that commercial don't do nothing for black folks. We don't understand you. And if you have a four-hour erection, go to the emergency room. In my neighborhood, we call that shit a treat. <laughs> You go down to the drugstore and tip the pharmacist <laughs> and hope he never cuts you off, huh? <laughs> and you know that come in your living room. You know, you see it. They don't hide that. <laughs> My little seven-year-old grandson said, Granddad, what's an erection? <laughs> I, I said, go ask your grandmother. <laughs> Black women so clever. He came back smiling. I said, "What she tell you?" She told me she would tell me later, but to come up here and tell you she hadn't seen one of them things around the house in years. <laughs> the whole lot of you white folks hire a nanny to change your baby's diaper. <laughs> but walk your own dog and pick up the dog shit. <laughs> the only thing that would help us with if somebody come from outer space and see y'all picking up dog shit, they think it's the dog they need to take back. <laughs> so if you became president and you want to end wars, all I would do is say, we'll no longer have the draft. We don't want your sons and daughters. We're going to take your dogs. <laughs> and everybody be in front of us. How come you can't take our children like you used to? Leave my dog alone. <laughs> See, Michael Vick didn't understand white folks and dogs. He thought oh, he hadn't signed $100 million. I tried to tell him. He had black lawyers in there. You don't know how white folks feel about them dogs. That boy going to jail. And he went to jail. And he got out. In America, where we claim, do your time, he did his time. People were still mad. He'd go back, he went to the, what, the Philadelphia Eagles. That first game. Didn't y'all see that first game? I hate that. I, I, I wouldn't. I think you got to be out of your mind to let a child of yours play football. This is the brain. And now all at once they're coming like they, they didn't know it. They saw that multi-million dollar lawsuit the other day. They've been knowing it. 
white folks do some dumb things, but that wasn't, they, they had, look, you the owner. That's, that's a multi-trillion dollar industry. You signed me. I'm the hottest thing in football. You signed me with a $500 million 10-year contract. Huh? And now my contract come up. And you're going to sign me for $100 million. And I don't believe that you don't know that 10 years ago, when I signed that contract, I was wearing size 7 hat. Now I'm wearing 43. <laughs> So Vic get out, and I was hoping that first game he would grab the ball and run the wrong way, 50 yards the wrong way, and then stop and turn back around and run all the way down, 150 yards, get a touchdown. And I don't know what it is about them black folks when they get up, they throw the ball down and do that old, I, I ain't figured it out. But I was hoping he would throw that ball down Pop, and that ball would bounce up in the stand and kill a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so somewhere, we thank you. <laughs> Chicago Tribune. Can you see the headline? Yeah. <laughs> Use mob to kill Gregory. Okay? Hoover. I got to tell Expo they did and gave me the Chicago Tribune. Hmm? Use the mob to kill Greg. I've never stolen nothing, never committed a crime in my life. That's this America that y'all don't know about. Hmm? When I was telling everybody, they was tapping my phone. Now y'all didn't believe it. Now they tap your phone. Hmm? See how it works? The interesting thing about this is all the seven agents that this went to, plus Hoover, <laughs> they all dead. I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere, you can. What's all that violence going on in the black community? Well, you know how they are. Yeah, we know how y'all are. This, this, I'm gonna read you, have never ran in American newspaper, just English papers. Listen to this good now. Crime linked to pollution? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Polluted water can cause brain damage that turns ordinary people into violent criminals, a researcher says. Roger hmm. hmm. Whole thing? Yeah. yeah. Roger Masters of Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire, compared crime figures from the FBI with information on industrial discharges of lead and manganese. He found link. Oh, did yeah. you hear that? Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. But they got you thinking it's us. Huh? And they spray every night them chemtrails in our black community. It's easy to make people believe a lie. When you basically didn't like me in the first place, but didn't know you didn't like me. <laughs> spread everywhere. Everywhere. It's it's everywhere. No, no, he, trust me, dear. Right trust me, dear. It's Listen to me. Everywhere. That's not the chemtrails. That's so you can say that, just like they do y'all. Huh? With this, this information here. And they got you believe. We do the research. We do the research and know what they do. Huh? Know what they do. Them damn drive-by shooting, that's organ stealing, okay? Organ stealing. You got some black pimp thugs that's out here killing folks. They drive by. How come they ain't killing women, huh? When did they get so fucking intelligent, the integrity, that they'll shoot me but won't shoot a black woman? And y'all don't figure that shit out, okay? But you think you know it, huh? I spend my money for rest. I spend $2 million doing research on breast milk, okay? I make the money, I can do it on anything I want, okay? I'm the one who released the picture with Ron Brown with the bullet in the back of his head, okay? And they couldn't deny it because the white folks did the autopsy, brought them to me, okay? There's a whole lot of people out here who take it. When they find somebody, they can get it up and get it. I haven't talked to me about stuff. That's why I know then I got the money to figure it out so that I know the government's not tricking me. 
Okay? And so when you stop and think about all the arguing stealing that go on in this country, just a minute, we're going to auction something out so y'all take the checkbooks out. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Hastings, yeah. General yeah. Christian, you know they killed him four oh, weeks yeah. ago yeah. in California, hit his car mm -hmm. with a laser. Uh, no, I didn't know that. Okay. When do you know what's the general they busted about with the woman and Petraeus. 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 They were getting ready to overthrow the government. Yes. Okay. <laughs> they was gonna kill Romney a week before the election. And then they would have to pick somebody to take his place, would have been Petraeus. So y'all just sit around here and go this whole bullshit way and think this is the way and you in for a rude awakening real soon. Okay. Cool. Did you finish that? Let's get you want the last paragraph? Yeah. Okay. So that he's found a link between pollution levels and murder, assault, and robbery. Counties with the highest pollution levels had the crime rates triple the U.S. average. Now, here, we're not going to go through all of this. That's the L.A. Times. What's the headline say? UCLA sued over its willed body program. They were stealing bodies from dead black folks. And they made them shut the agreement. They shut the crematorium down. I haven't heard that word since Nazi Germany. And here's right under our nose, okay? Hmm. Right under our nose. New York Times story. What did it say there? 44 charged by U.S. and New Jersey corruption sweep. That's organ stealing. Hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. And so organ. when you. Oh, organ. Organ. Yeah, yeah. Organ. Organ. yeah, yeah. Yes. yes. You thought I was talking about the state, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so, when you look at the, uh, thank you, yeah, thanks. when you look at the Rodney King, so I called a friend of mine. See, you know, it was two other people in the car with Rodney King that night. They died mysteriously. So I said, check this out for me. He checked it out. He said he was sentenced to nine years in jail, and we can't find out why he's out. That was eight weeks ago he sentenced. Hmm? He said, well, we got something. Three o'clock in the morning, that police action happened, and two Australians in this country for the first time just happened to be in the right hotel, hmm? filmed it, and at seven o'clock that morning, it was running, California is running all over the world, and nobody said, how'd they know who to take it to? Hmm? So then we check it, and we find out it was Australian husband and wife, with the Australian secret police heavily connected to the CIA. Hmm? And here's, this is the LA Times. Thought I had my glasses up here, but yeah, here they are. I want you to hear this now. Here we go. This is in the New York Times International, Sunday, May the 10th, 1992. Los Angeles police differ sharply with prosecutor on arrest. Police officials said today that they have arrested 18,213 people from Wednesday night April 29th, the day the rides begun through this morning. But the prosecutor said they cannot account for as many as 10,000 of those people. That's fucking organ stealing. But they tell you a bunch of niggas acting a fool and they can get by with it. You next, okay? Listen to this here. This is this, is, this, is, this little conversation between the two of them. We don't know where they are these people are, said Han. 
the Los Angeles city attorney. It's a mystery to a lot of us in the system, okay? Okay? Did you hear me? So we ran a trail. They carried them from there to Portland, Oregon. I get hold of the NAACP. I said, you see a lot of black folk come through there? He said, yeah. I said, how'd they explain it? He said, well, these black folks are uneducated, but there's a shortage of firefighters, forest fires. So we're going to take them there and teach them how to forest fire, and they can be used all over the world. No more explanation. Hmm? Somewhere. China. When you were sentenced to die by firing squad, they put a bullseye and shoot you in your heart. Today, they shoot you in your head and harvest everything down. Hmm? This is going on right underneath you. Hmm? And so somewhere, I cannot say thank you enough. I've been out here a long time. Uh, I see every move, and this one caught me off guard. Hmm? You hear me? This was serious business. Huh? And I don't know how many of you all know You know Operation Binko out of the Philippines? Raise your hand if you know it. Bajinko, Bajinko, Bajinko. I'm sorry, Bajinko. They found that five years before September the 11th, where the government was worried about some long, little thug Filipinos. And they arrested the one guy and went to his home and broke into his hard drive. And everything y'all dealing with was lifted five years ago. Turned it over to the FBI and the CIA. And we ain't heard another word of it. So all of us that knew about it, we know New York would be here. Hmm? We know the World Trade Building. We knew the White House would be here. And we knew Pentagon, Sears Tower, and uh, Transamerica, the bank in San Francisco. Now, ask yourself a question. When they hit New York, they didn't evacuate another building in New York City. How they knew it wasn't going to be some other buildings blowed up? Hmm? When they hit D.C., there was no other building them to evacuate. How'd they know? With all the government and all the information. Huh? When they... They didn't hit Chicago, but they knew that was on the list. So they evacuated the Sears Tower, the tallest building in the world, and two blocks away is the Standard Oil Building, two feet shorter, and they never evacuated that building. Huh? How'd they know? They knew. And so somewhere when you stop and think about the job we have to do. And we can't talk about where we're going to get the money. You create it. And that's what we're fixing to do with this auction. Create it. And then go home and copy some and sell them to your friends. Give it to them for Christmas and then send the money into them somewhere. Here we are here. <laughs>